And now, Freelance Heroism presents Bard Company. Hey everybody, welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Deese. And I'm Rachel. And before we even get started, we just want to say thank you to everyone out there who donates at the Patreon, in particular those who donate at the producer tier. Mm-hmm. Rachel, would you like to let us know who they are? I would love to. We want to say thank you to Duncan, Crispy, Nate, Breakmeister, and Rebecca. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm not going to say bacon. Not going to. Oh, shit. <laughs> Crispy bacon. Uh huh. Anyway, thank you so much. We really appreciate it, and we couldn't do it without you guys. Yeah, thank you. Rachel. Deez. New players in D&D. It's a thing. It's good. It's a good thing, right? Yeah. Overall, it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. It has good qualities to it. Yes. It's a thing. <laughs> Modifying slowly. You are t- kind of slowly... <laughs> The okay, mask so here... is slowly slipping. <laughs> yeah, I th- look. I think it's great that there are new players in D anD. d Absolutely, um, and I think that it's good if you're new to something that you follow the rules very strictly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now that Baldur's Gate's out, there's a whole another wave of new players, and the the old new players aren't even old old players yet. Mm-hmm. They're new olds who are still doing a lot of the new player stuff. And there's also new new players who are doing Bowder's Gate 3 stuff, yes. right? Yeah. Which is, I mean, there's going to be a lot of pushing uh, in D&D and without, you know, bull rush attempts and trips and so, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to see more combat mechanics. That's a positive. Maybe we'll get that. Yeah. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but okay. <laughs> um, I think mm-hmm. that a lot of of these new players should be made aware of a few things. Mm-hmm. One, you're going to play a character that isn't you at some point, hopefully very soon. Correct. Right? Yeah. I think we're all victim of of when we start playing D&D, we play something that's familiar and mm-hmm. then we branch outward from there. Yeah. And I'm not saying like you're an elf or you're an orc or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what I am saying is that you tend to play characters that have either thoughts feelings or traits in common with you Mm -hmm. would you say that's fair for your first character absolutely um i think at least for me the idea of learning this entire new rule system with a bunch of people um just also the idea of like playing a character that didn't have my same kind of thought process that would have been too overwhelming for me. Yeah. To really put yourself in the headspace of a person that has nothing in common with you mm-hmm. is is a taxing process for sure. Yes. And then while trying to learn the rules. Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. That's a totally fair thing. That being said, mm-hmm. I want, if you're new to d d if you're listening to this, because there are a lot of new people coming, so maybe they'll go out and look for podcasts, maybe they'll find this one, and maybe you all stumbled across this intro. If that's the case, or if you've been playing for a couple of years and you want to get better, I highly recommend playing something that is not like you in any way, shape mm-hmm. or form, right? Play yeah. something that doesn't have two arms and two legs, right? Play yeah. something that has a severe limitation, right? Play mm-hmm. something that's not mathematically perfect. Play mm-hmm. something that is weird. Do you, what do you recommend? Do you have any weird recommendations? I I would recommend um, playing something where uh, the character's background is not similar to your background, and I think that would really help with the creation of a character that doesn't isn't just like a copy of your own thought process, because they're going right. to have different motivations and a different view of the world. Right, and sometimes I. So, like, I, you see a lot of good parties. I think the majority of D&D parties are good parties because mm-hmm. it's easier for new people to understand. Yeah. Evil parties are good parties. I want to clarify this. Mm-hmm. I think, like, we have some hard times with people who think that evil is the opposite of good. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Evil is a justification of what they're doing. That's mm-hmm. all there is. 
they think they're doing good. Oftentimes. I mean, of course, there are times where they know they're bad and they just dig it. Yeah. That's cool, too. But <laughs> most of the evil people that you'll meet mm-hmm. have a justification for the things that they're doing. They think that the ends justify the means. And so the things that they're doing aren't as evil as you might think. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So I, I like to think that if you're playing an evil character... The motivation behind why you're evil or perceived as evil, you know? Yeah. I, that, I think, though, can also be maybe more complicated than if you're playing a good character because a really simple motivation for playing a good character is I want to help people. Right. A farmer came over to me and said, Wolves are harassing his livestock. I want to help people. I'm going to do that. Right. But an evil character might be like, Right. But the wolves were here first. Mm -hmm. You've encroached on their land. And now you're asking me to fucking kill them because Mm -hmm. they acted in their nature. So the only person here with any active decision making is you and you've caused conflict amongst the balance of nature. And now my Drew is going to murder this human village (laughs) to restore the balance to what was once pure and wholesome and found in nature. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, the fact that he would claim that this is for for good, <laughs> meanwhile, poisoning rats in the basement that are just looking for shelter from... Like, these types of justifications you could make mm-hmm. for a druid character... Who is just like, no, fuck kill those wolves. Me and those wolves are going to come back here and, and run you out of town. Restore the balance of nature. Yeah. Or maybe you just like power and you're like, what if I can get these wolves on my side? Oh, what if yeah. what if you're the evil druid and you actually made this deal with the wolves? Yeah. And now, now nobody is going to be suspicious when you're investigating the farmer's land and, right. you know. Yeah, I have to walk around looking for the wolves. That's right. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to go into your into your most top secret locations mm-hmm. for wolf prevention measures. That's right. Yeah, I mean, that's a silly thing, right? Like <laughs> I'm going to use the wolves as a decoy. Yeah. But the but the truth is, I mean, that that's essentially what being evil is should be like. So mm-hmm. if you decide to play an evil character, just ride your motivations to the to the end, yeah. right? I think that because I had a conversation recently with a person that I know Mm -hmm. and they they were playing Baldur's Gate 3 and they hate the Illithids. Right. Right. So their thinking was that they take over people uh, and they hijack their bodies, which is a fair thing from the human perspective. That's a totally fair thing to think. But Illithids are they need to reproduce. That's that's true and that's how they have evolved into reproducing (laughs) that's what they have to do to survive you know if a person robs a store for a loaf of bread so that they don't die from Mm -hmm. hunger right are they evil no i don't think so i wouldn't i don't think any person with a heart that could put themselves in another person's shoes could see that as evil yeah Right, I don't think so. And that's that's exactly what's happening with illithids. Yeah, they're. I mean, and also I, I like to think of it like this with the illithids in particular, is that most people in the world don't think that they kidnapped a bunch of chicken babies in order to make their omelet. <laughs> right. Most people True. don't see it as that mm-hmm. kind of morally black and white. Right. Yeah. They. Went to the store, they got some eggs, because that's how you make a fucking omelet, mm-hmm. right? And that's what the Illithids think. Like, we perceive us as very important, but the Illithids don't. We're just some fucking... Whatever, we're chickens, and they're trying to make an omelet. Yeah, I mean... And the chickens keep fucking throwing tantrums. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, from their perspective, they're... You know, they're, they're riding around in these living ships that can like yeah. do all kinds of crazy stuff and in D, 
you know the the humans and and the orcs and stuff like none of them can do that so maybe they just they see the humans uh, as chickens less than yeah yeah the less than and, and but that's my point though is that that type of shifting like empathic spectrum needs to work not just when it is positive to you mm -hmm. as a human yeah. But also when it's from an outside source that maybe is not in any way related to. I think that's important. And I think new players should maybe try that once in a while. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying every character needs to be that or that that needs to be a consideration for every game. But try it once in a while. It'll help. Yeah. To sort of. Yeah. I I do think at least part of it is just the the comfort level of learning a new a new system. I yeah. have um, a group, like a home game that I DM for, and there is a wide spectrum of uh, like tabletop experience from my yeah. players. Uh, some of them have been playing for a long time and they've played different systems, and some of them hadn't played D and D before, but they had you know played fantasy video games or they read fantasy novels, and then a couple of them hadn't done anything like that. Yeah. And um, the way that uh, all of these different people play their characters or their character motivations. Um, there's diff there's only different comfort levels of sort of playing a character who is not like you. One of my characters, one of my players, we joke that um, she basically plays this her herself for every character that she makes. Yeah. Uh, she's definitely the newest player, so I think right. that makes sense. But she, you know, she's been asking lately, like, how do you sort of plan out a character and determine their motivations um one of the other newer characters for a few campaigns he also basically just played himself just this is myself as a dwarf this is myself as you know a human yeah um but in this most recent campaign he he has branched out uh which from a dm perspective is very very cool to watch this sort of evolution of how they've been playing their characters yeah i mean i think I think this game is bigger than people give it credit for. Yeah. Right. Just because it's not written down in the book doesn't mean it can't happen. <laughs> I I want to clarify that in particular for you. I know that you've been <laughs> playing for a while, but I know you get book centric sometimes. <laughs> Look, I when when I played when we first played, there weren't as many books. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. There weren't a billion fucking three five really really polished that sort up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Three five had like books for everything. It was like wiping your ass handbooks and shit. Like <laughs> it's like <laughs> the idea that anything you wanted to do uh was was already detailed and had rules and everything. Mm -hmm. Um back in the day there were four classes and you picked those four classes and you then would modify them and their proficiencies and, and things like that so that you would get exactly what you wanted mm -hmm. using these templates but that's all they were were templates and then a lot of it was how you carried yourself and how you played your character that defined your role right right so there wasn't a uh spell archer you just had mm -hmm. to make a thief and then maybe take a level of wizard or two and that's why i still do that today i can't help it like i know that there's like arcane trickster and shit like that mm -hmm. but i just I'd rather just fucking rogue for five and then three <laughs> here in uh -huh. uh, wizard and then go back to, I just, I, that's my thinking. I've always done it that way. I should probably mix it up, but I just think that, you know, I think being creative is part of the game. Mm -hmm. That's how the universe works. And I think the best DMS and the best players are the ones that can hear something be like, that is fucking cool. I want to do that. I want this to happen. Yeah. I'm going to allow and make this happen. Right. Mm -hmm. I heard someone describe Matt Mercer's DM style as the rule of cool. Uh -huh. Right. If uh, something is cool enough and he thinks it serves the story, he's going to work with you to get there. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think that's how you should play. I actually, um, I saw a, uh, it was on TikTok or something about the introduction that he had to 
uh, one of my favorite NPCs in his first Critical Role campaign. Uh-huh. Um, and the party was exploring the Underdark, and they'd found, like, this waterfall. And they were like, there's got to be something oh, behind that waterfall. I actually, I heard that story, and they put something back there. Yeah, and the he... A pile of rags and bones and stuff. Yeah, the NPC that he, like, he's... At this point in the TikTok, he's like, I didn't have anything planned, but I had this NPC I was going to introduce much later in the story. But the idea of like, oh, the characters, the players are really excited. They think that they've figured something out. Why not introduce this character a little early? Um, And it's a very cool kind of creepy introduction. And it was like one of my favorite characters that he had in that in that entire arc. And that's, I mean, he got the vibe of the table, mm-hmm. noticed that they felt like there was a win, that yeah. they had been clever and wanted to be rewarded for that clever. Mm-hmm. And you want to reinforce that type of behavior. Yeah. Right? So you have to pay out, right? Mm-hmm. Like, even if the machine has, was it, uh, two sets of cherries and then the last one's a banana and you don't get the full lotto wheel roll perfect mm-hmm. maybe sometimes you just roll that wheel around just to give <laughs> them the give them the payout you know yeah i hope everyone followed that metaphor i got there a little weird <laughs> anyway mm-hmm. i think just don't be so locked in i know that Baldur's gate 3 is excellent and it's the freedom that really gives you a lot of fun Mm-hmm. right that all of these different ways you can handle things but at the base level a lot of it is programmed and there are certain numbers of possibilities that's the nature of a video game yes if you're going to come from that and come into D, you need to be very uh malleable yes i think that's a positive way to talk about it yeah any uh closing notes i don't think so i think you said it pretty well i um one thing i was thinking about while you were talking is that i wonder if (laughs) this idea of like oh i have to just be a character that's myself and i follow these rules of typically being a good character um when i was running a group kids D &D game the kids were much more chaotic and i don't know if it was like sort of a freedom of they didn't yet have the idea of i need to play as a fantasy version of myself right or if it's just kids being chaotic but like they're they were all playing good characters essentially like they were helping out towns and you know people with yeah quests and stuff but there was one point where they're spying on this huge enemy camp and they hear a rumor that near the camp there's a cave and in the cave there are dragon eggs. Mm. And even though they had just been sent to kind of spy on the camp and then go back to like warn these townspeople who are like weird, we need this information. They wanted those dragon so eggs. They're like, we have to get these dragon eggs. But this this enemy camp is huge. There's like goblins and bugbears and everything just all over the place. What can we do? And then one of them goes, I have an idea. Earlier in the game, we found like this, these like religious, um, like amulets and and stuff like that. We're going to take those and we're going to make like demon sigils and like, like evil signs. And we're going to basically do like sacrilege to this like good aligned holy symbol. And that's going to summon a demon and we're going to make a deal with the demon to get what? these dragon yeah just out of no just this Whoa. Really? Yeah. hard pivot just a hard because because they wanted these dragon eggs and um so they do this and i have no idea i know you, I know you said that they're a good party but that's an evil party right that's an right. evil party <laughs> that's a, you know what that's actually excellent because all it took was a little greed yeah to get them there yeah that's a cool narrative and I think, like, if a regular good party had heard, oh, there's dragon eggs, you'd be like, yeah, but the townspeople really need this information. We have to go back. Maybe at some point we can come back later and try to get these eggs if we really want them. But, you know, we told the, we told the mayor of the town that we would come back and, and give them this information. Who the fuck is the mayor? But, some guy. <laughs> some guy. 
<laughs> so they they do like this evil ritual that they make up and I have them make some religion rolls and then basically an imp shows up and the imp's like, yeah, I'll make a distraction and you can go in the cave and get those dragon eggs. They made a deal with an imp. They made a deal with an imp. I like how you how you both gave them what they were looking for, mm-hmm. but didn't make it work 100%. Yeah. They got, an imp. <laughs> <Was it? laughs> they got a little fucking imp. Yeah. Well, they, they actually roll pretty badly on their religion <laughs> rolls. I didn't want to have like, oh, here's like a Cambian, you know, here's like a yeah. demon lord who's going to show up so you... Yeah, archdevil dra- of the pit. <laughs> right. He's going to answer your call so you can go steal some dragon eggs. Hi, I'm Asmodeus. Let me go ahead and distract this town. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like, one one of the kids had suggested this plan and then they're all immediately for it. And... That um, is wild. I just think if you had taken a group of new players but they were older i don't think you would have had that same pivot of we want these dragon eggs yeah i think you want somewhere in between i think you want somewhere in between (laughs) lose all alignment because dragon eggs but Mm -hmm. at the same time maybe that is a thing that you could play off of right so like none of the things are damaging to the campaign i want to clarify that too Mm -hmm. that if something goes the way you didn't want it did not ruin anything. Right. Right? Like, yeah. there are times where paladins lose their oath, mm-hmm. and then they regain it, and that's the tale of that paladin. Yeah. About how, in their younger days, they lost their oath, and there was a struggle to get it back, and it made them better understand the oath that they had taken. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, that it's all part of the, of the development. I think it's... And those kids are an evil party. And you <laughs> they just didn't understand. They didn't know. They were too young to understand mm-hmm. that they were, you know. Summoning a demon. They they are the aspect of avarice on earth. <laughs> and they now speak unto the great imp. Mm-hmm. Basco Goblin. <laughs> and Basco Goblin gives. Mm-hmm. And Basco Goblin takes away. Oh. Yeah. Well... On that note, perhaps we should go to this All week's hail Basta Goblin. <laughs> Why don't we go to this week's episode? Sure. Speaking of chaotic immature parties. Mm-hmm. This week hey. is a, this week is a Bard Company episode. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Oh, I get it. All right. That's the name of the episode. This is Bard Company episode thirty two, Staying Undead. This is Lich King! Therian, give me a dust save. He has bardic inspiration. I, I don't want to. Um, you get okay. inspiration, though. Yeah, I know. Do you, can you use that for death saves? I don't know. Uh, I, I have no clue, but I'm, I'm voting yes. I vote yes. Well, hold on. <laughs> the the yeas gonna... have it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to outvote me. It's law. Bardic inspiration. I'm going to hit my golden buzzer. And okay. he's just going to Hollywood, okay? So let's not make a thing out of this. As a bonus action, a creature other than you, Cure gains inspiration. It can be added to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Oh. So it can be. So I get okay. a D6. All right. All right. So let's see how this goes. Death save. Straight up D20, right? Yep. Uh, there's the D20 button. Roll it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, no. That's a natural one. That's, that an audit? that's you two got... fails. Fuck. But I have a D6, right? So doesn't that... That one is two fails. Yeah. So does it doesn't matter. A, if it's the roll, it's the roll. Yeah. Uh... I have the law. Sorry. Right. So wait, so you're, you're We're breaking you're... the law. Breaking the... <laughs> one more and you, you're dead, dead? Yeah. Okay, so does that mean I blew my... Uh, did, I, did I blow the bardic inspiration then? Uh, no, you haven't used it. Okay. Thank I believe you, you have it for like a minute. Uh, or maybe 10 minutes. Let me see. I it can... is a number of minutes. It is either one or 10. 10 minutes. Okay. If Rachel doesn't pay attention to zeros. I don't. They're, they're insignificant. <laughs> well, she, we got to get why it. She always, put that's why she always gets paid $37. Because <laughs> fuck the zeros. Yes. Very. got to get a health potion in his ass. All right. Yeah. 
Uh, knock, knock, knock it on heaven's door here. I'm going to knock, knock on your back door. We can get him a potion. We can get him a potion. Uh, let's see. Zombie is going to move. Uh, the zombie that was at Renazmir will move to Varus and attack and miss. Uh, and it missed. <laughs> That's right. Again. Take and that, mother. <laughs> and then he, then he ate a popsicle. <laughs> and then he missed. You know what? Me and Rachel laugh at that real hard. I don't know if anyone else has seen that clip. So it's not funny to anyone else, but just look up. He hit and took a miss, and then he hit, then he missed, then a miss. Yeah, look up the Game Drums video. I watched, I, I watched like a video where it just took the audio of that, and I still laughed about it. It's so good. Um, let's see. This other one that was at Renazmir, uh, he's also gonna go over to Varus. Varus, does a sixteen hit you? It does. In what dimension? Yes. Two bludgeoning damage. Wait, wait. I already used my reaction for this turn, right? Yes. Damn it. Well, technically, this is a new round. So. Oh. I could do that, but... How bad do you feel? Do you, does he look really hurt? Don't do that. Do I'm the more skill. than half down. Let's put it that way. He looks like half the man he used to be. Okay. Okay. Well, well, I haven't had my beer this morning. <laughs> breakfast beer. Second breakfast beer. My liquid loaf. <laughs> okay. Right, well, you doing anything? No. Okay. I have. I only have so many charge fits over here. I gotta manage them. Uh, flame uh, skull's turn. We've had first liver liver failure, but how about second? <laughs> uh, Motherfucker, I've had both of them replaced. What do you think happened to Leslie? You want to do? <laughs> oh, it so happened. You harvested his organs? Well, shit, they were a match. <laughs> well, he wasn't using them. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you don't need a liver to, you know, copulate with a goat and a sable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I have a really cool idea for me and Rachel talking the other day about this. Uh, and I kind of, div- like, on the fly was like, oh, we could, I- I'll, I don't want to tell you now that I'm thinking about it. It's probably better if I don't. Rachel, I think, can pretend she doesn't know. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Forget I didn't say. I didn't say anything. <sighs> you're dead. You wouldn't even hear it. Uh, let's see here. Breakfast beering. He's gonna cast a spell. And a five foot diameter sphere of fire will appear. Um. Has a range of sixty feet, so he's just on gonna put it by Varus. Nate, on top of Nate's body, <laughs> just flame broils him. Uh, no, it's gonna be here by Varus. You call me the Whopper. Um, Welcome to Murder King. Let's see here. So any creature that <laughs> I like a wood elf turn, deep fried. So you make a save if you end your turn next to it, so you don't make. A safe right now, Varys. I feel into a burning ring of fire. You may, you may want to move. The DM cast it down, down, down. And... Is she trying to send us to Avernus to start that game? I swear to God, places? dude. It's, it's, She's it's just so sick way. of our shit. She's just like, you know what? Fuck it. Rocks fall, you all die, you bastards. Uh, you know, she l- lured us in this false, false sense of security, telling you us, yeah, I studied the thing, I studied the next FYI, one, and then I even looked at a third one in case you guys got through all that shit. No, she's I like, did. fuck, I'm going to kill him. Yeah, I want to initiate a vote of non-confidence in the coin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's, you know. The so coin this is even... in cahoots <laughs> with the skulls. Oh, this isn't even the lost mind of Fandelver. This is some shit she just made up to kill us. <laughs> she's like, you know what? Eight zombies and a flame skull. Why not? We survived uh, everything up till now. Yeah, there's gonna be a big purple worm coming out of the ground in about five minutes. I guarantee you. The I'm zombie so making at Varys misses. Uh, let's see. Of course, I misses. Does he end his turn in the flame? Uh, yeah, because he's dumb. Yes, sir. <laughs> DM the DM. He passes his dexterity save. Rip, what the does. fuck? takes only half damage which is still enough to kill him almost kills him god damn it. <laughs> uh and then the next zombie that was at virian will move over to varus of course he attack does. him uh varus does a 16 hit you yeah 
Yeah. Three damage. He Damn. also ends his turn next to the sphere. I keep getting picked he apart. fails his save. Yes! And takes enough damage to kill him. Uh, Varys, it is Who's your the... turn. I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Zephyr's Strike. Uh, what Zephyr's Strike... Uh, Zephyr... Uh, sorry. Zephyr's Strike does. I move like the wind until the spell ends. And I do not, my movement does not provoke attack of opportunities. That's Once before you have the five zombies on. You. Oh yeah! Once before the spell ends, you give yourself advantage on one weapon attack on your turn. The attack deals an extra D8 force on a hit, but whether you hit or miss, your walking speed increases thirty until the end of that turn. Okay. So uh, I'm going to cast Zephyr Strike. I'm going to haul my little what ass over to fucking Varian. Cast Cure. Okay. So are those both actions? No, Zephyr Strike is a bonus action. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes. And I skip by no attack of opportunity because I move like the wind, like Varen's ass. Okay. And <laughs> right. I'm going to cast Cure at um, level right, one. Never forget it. It's all about my ass. Always. That is that's a seven. The part I'll save Actually, no, hold on. Seven plus uh, four, four. So uh, seven plus four is my math sucks. Eleven HP back to Varen. Yay! And I'm going to run my ass another fucking whatever fucking I got left to my speed of like 60. All right. Uh, I assume you're going back down the hallway. Uh, or do you want to go not near Raz because I don't want to like fucking get like near everyone. I mean, he's yeah, but... at the he's at like the back of the the hall before it turns south. A zombie whack will make you jump. jump. Um, I want to get at least with with 30 feet away from the zombies. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, so Virian, you wake up. Uh, it's not actually your turn yet. Um, one of the zombies that was at nope. Varus. Wait, wait, wait. I want to move my initiative. I had a 22. You moved it to the end of. For that her. turn. No, it goes there. That's not how that works. That's how that works. I delayed my turn. I, I was ready early and I waited. <laughs> you move it, you move where you're going in initiative. Oh, permanently? I didn't know that's how it worked. I think it's permanent. I thought it was like when, when like Braveheart's like, hold! Hold! I thought that's what it was. No. Okay, whatever. Fine. Alright. Uh, so the zombie that was on Varus and then Varus moved, uh, he has not noticed that Virian is conscious again. Um, but he doesn't go after you guys. He just kind of looks at the two of you at the end of the hall and then he just kind of goes, hmm... He turns around and walks back into the, the cavern. Uh, Renazmir, it is your turn. I want to do okay. the Shaun of the Dead thing. I'm <laughs> going to move up towards uh, towards the entry. Like, probably won't make it all the way. I'll, I'll move up as far as I can where I'll still be out of range of the um, of uh, the zombies if they were to move in my direction. Okay. But I have this suspicion that they won't exit that area because they're sort of like a defensive thing. The one that was up there, though, is, has been damaged, correct? Uh, so quite a few have been damaged. Um, one of them, the one that moved back, uh, has not been damaged. Um, there's another one kind of where Varus was that has not been damaged. And then three that also are at where Varus was, and those have been damaged quite a bit. Okay. Well, then I'm going to do... Uh, toll the dead on one of the ones that's damaged just to give him a fair shot. Okay. The one... Are you going for the one that's the... They all look pretty close to death. Um, uh, which one looks the worst off? Uh, one of them looks the worst off. I will target that guy. Okay. Um, toll the dead is also a, a necromancy spell. Yes. Isn't toll the dead a cantrip? Yeah, that's not... <laughs> All right, give me a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. I might do it anyway, just because. How far could I move up if I uh, would I be able to be within fifteen feet of of the zombies? Yes. Okay. Well, then I'll do that. Okay. How many in a fifteen-foot block could I get? Um, four. All four. Yeah, there's a fifth one that moved back into the um, the cavern. The others have it's not their turn yet, so they haven't been able to move. Okay, well then I'm gonna do that. Okay. Get into position, 
and then use Thunder Wave again. Okay. Which is a first level. All right. Uh, so they need to roll con saves. Okay. Is a fail. Second one is a 20. And then an 18. And then a 10. So those are fails, yeah? Uh, what's that? Uh, What's the DC? 14. Okay, so yeah, two of them fail. Okay, well it's 11 damage for the ones that fail, and mm -hmm. they get pushed back. And then the other ones take, I guess, round dead down as five. Uh, so three of them die. All right, I need one of them. The one of them that died is going to trigger Grim Harvest. Okay. Um, which is going to give me some hit points back. Uh, right. It was the non necromancy who X um, the spell level, so uh, plus my. I think it's charisma, right? Sorry, I, I literally. I'm it's trying okay. to. I, I have like six tabs open on six different things. Oh, God damn it. And then the PDF failed. Good. Twice uh, the spell level, yeah. or three times its level if it's a necromancy spell. So I gained two hit points back. You don't gain this benefit for killing constructs or undead. Oh, balls. That was the whole point. Okay, fine. Whatever. All right. Damn it. <laughs> I wanted those hit points. That's no fear. You change the outcome by measuring it. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm here. Virian. Give me you a death quantum death. fuck. Or, wait, no. Yeah. Don't give me a death save. You're awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. So and it's... I'm fucked. Uh, Half what your am move I to stand up? Yep. That gives me 15 feet left. What immediately surrounds me? Um, you can see there are a couple of zombies about 20 feet ahead of you. Uh, the flame skull is maybe five or 10 feet beyond them. Okay. And are they still in attack mode? Because I've been unconscious for a bit and I'm not, you know. What, what, what does my perception tell me? Are we still the, in danger? Do I see my bandmates? Uh, the zombies haven't noticed yet. That I'm awake. Not, yeah, not yet. So does um, that mean I get advantage against them since they're unaware? <laughs> uh, sure. Oh, cool. Uh, no, that's actually not going to make much of a difference. Um, dum, dum, dum. The flaming skull is still floating above, right? Yes. Uh, well, I know that what I did earlier didn't hurt it quite so much, but I'm considering trying to hit it much, much harder. Uh, uh, what's going to do more damage potentially? Uh, okay, so I'm going to cast... Mm, should I do it that way? Uh, I'm going to try Witch Bolt again. <clears throat> I know it only did half damage, but this time I'm going to cast it as a second level spell. Um, and I've got Bardic Inspiration, so yes. let's see what happens here. I cast Witch Bolt. Come on, do your thing. How does a 17... Well, you know what? I, I think a 17 will hit. I don't know if yes. I need to do it. Okay, all right. Very good. I do 2d12 damage, and then I can sustain that. Mm. Actually, if I wanted to heal myself, should I have done that first as a bonus action since this is a concentration spell? Um, no, because the heal that you're going to do probably isn't a concentration. It's not. Okay, so I don't have to break. All right. No. Uh, yeah, so in that case, I roll 2d12 damage. That is a 9 and a 10, so 19... Okay. which I'm sure will be halved. Is this more lightning? Uh, this is lightning damage, yes. Okay, so that is halved. Uh, and then I will <clears throat> cast... Uh, I'm only down nine points, so I think I'm just going to use a first-level healing word on myself as a bonus action, which is 2d4. I roll 7 plus 2 is 9, and I am back to full health. Nice. Um, and there's nothing immediately upon me, right? Right. Uh, um, so there are a couple of zombies. Yep. Um, there's also a, uh, I think you were unconscious when the flame skull cast Flaming Sphere, which is yep. uh, maybe 10 feet 
away from you at this moment. And I notice that everybody has like run down the hall. Uh, it see it seems yeah, like they're moving. Down I'm, the hall. I'm by myself. Uh, I guess I'll use my remaining 15 feet to backtrack towards them because I'll be okay. damned if I'm going to be the front man on this one. All right, uh, flame skull. Uh, he's going to move the sphere uh, down the hallway towards you guys, uh, basically like right in front of you guys. So if you, uh, when it comes to your turn, if you end your turn there, then you're going to take uh, some fire damage. Ass wipe. Um, let's see. The... Shorty's going to get it. <laughs> uh, Ernazmir, you were still like in kind of the hallway. Is that right? Yeah, I'm in the like sort of towards the doorway. Okay. Uh so uh the zombies kind of look at you but they don't they don't pursue you. I'm going to uh, flip them the bird. Okay. Varys. Two birds. Varys, your turn. All right. Um since that so Zephyr strike still activated with the force, mm-hmm. I'm going to hunter's mark the flame skull. Okay. Um and drop the mace, pull my bow and take a shot. All right. So, god damn, this is going to hurt. I hope. Uh, that is a 16. That will hit. All right. Ooh, there we go. All right. Um, 6 plus 6 plus 8, that's 12 to uh, 20. Plus 4, that is 24. Okay. And this is piercing damage? Um, The bow is piercing. Hunter's Mark, I'm not sure. It says a D6 of extra damage. But the the Zephyr's Force damage. Okay. How much uh, is piercing damage from your bow? I didn't designate which dice it was. There's an 8 and a 6 on the D8s. Okay. So we'll say it's the 8. That's going to be halved. So that only does half damage. All right. Um, and then what is the rest of the amount? Uh, um, I'm assuming the the, the uh, four decks are added to the piercing. Mm-hmm. So that was um, eight plus four is 12. So that would be six half. Okay. And then the remaining from Hunter's Mark and Zephyr is 12. Okay. All right. Uh, he looks pretty bad. Anything else, Varys? I give Bardic Inspiration to the up and running cocaine field man again. Okay. Uh, zombie doesn't do anything. Well, hold guys... it, because I haven't used yours. Oh, shit. Then Raz. Yeah. <laughs> Should have had a V8. Uh, zombie. <laughs> Should have had a D8. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't do anything. Uh, Renazmir, it is your turn. So there are two zombies. One has been injured, one has not. And then the flame skull, which has also been uh, pretty heavily injured. Um, right, oh, Varys, did you move? As long as I'm staying out of the flame, no. Uh, you you would have to move. So you would then either have moving. to move south, which will um, make it so you can no longer see the flame skull, or you oh, have to move no. forward down the hallway toward the flame skull and the zombies. I'm not, I'm not sober enough to run away that far. <laughs> I'll go back into the area and just stay out of the flame sphere. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Renazmir? All right. I'm going to do a ranged... Uh, attack, spell attack. Okay. Uh, Toll the dead on the one that's injured. All right. Uh, seven. Uh, does he make a? He it's just a spell. It's his AC. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that hits. He takes four damage. <laughs> Ooh, okay. what a good one! But it's a cantrip, so. Still alive. Uh. Are you staying put or are you moving? Isn't he not alive? He's staying undead. He's staying in the... Yeah, okay. Isn't that the one you roll the higher dice if it's undead you're tolling? Yeah, 1d12 I rolled it. Okay. I just got a 4. So. It's also a lesser known uh, BG song, Staying (laughs) staying (laughs) Undead. (laughs) It's probably more appropriate. Uh, Renazmir, are you moving? Uh, How close am I to everyone else? Um, you're adjacent to Varian as well as the Flaming Sphere. 
Um, right. Well, that's not going to be a thing. I'm Varys move has moved that. up. I'm going to move back. The only way to move back would be south, which means that you won't be able to see the the room where the monster's in it again. I'll get right up on the corner so I can peek around and look, but not close enough to where I can be in range of another spell. Okay. Uh, Virian, your turn. All right. So I still should be able to see the flaming skull from where I am. Yes. Okay, so since Witch Bolt is concentration, I'm just going to do a thing again. Uh, since I cast it at second level, uh, so the initial damage. Uh, okay, so I can deal 1d12 lightning damage to it, which I will do. Okay. That's 11, so halved. Barely alive. Ice and... concentration check. Oh, and he fails. Flaming Spear dies. Ooh, okay. Well, then I don't have to move. Um, so the, a concent- uh, that still constitutes as my action. Um, I don't have anything else I can do. I is it or to. is it a bonus action to activate it? Well, that's what I'm trying to see. On hit, and on each of your turns for the duration, you can use your action to deal 1d12 lightning okay. damage automatically. So it is an action. It's not a bonus action. So okay. that's really all I can do at the moment. I guess I will at least move forward, though, um, to be... Now that the flame sphere is gone, I'll uh, move up by Varus. Okay. Flaming Skull's turn. Flaming Skull singing Oingo Boingo Dead Man's Party. (laughs) Uh, He is going to... Uh, He's going to cast a spell... Uh, and you see that he becomes sort of blurred. Um, so uh, if you attack him, you have disadvantage on your attack roll. Who got blurred? Uh, the the Flaming Skull. He's back? He's blurred. He is still alive. Oh, shit. thought he was dead. Nope. He's almost dead. Uh, <sighs> zombie. He's back no and one's, blur. No one's far enough into the room for him to attack. Uh, Varys, <laughs> Once he got blurred, he just goes... <laughs> That's it. That's all he says. The whole song. <laughs> I got a half high. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Got a half high. <laughs> Sorry. Is it my turn? All right, everyone was being real quiet for a minute. Varys. <laughs> I feel a little delirious right now because <laughs> I'm trying to do so many things, but like... All of a sudden, it gets real quiet, and I'm like, oh my god, someone's talking to me. <laughs> Varys, do you know you're muted? <laughs> yeah, those words muted. cannot be speaking on the show. podcast, thus we'd be pulled off the air, so that's why I was muted. Oh. <laughs> um, shit. So, there are two zombies, one which has taken no damage so far, and a flame skull. And the flame skull's blurred, so if I shoot it, it takes half damage. No, you have disadvantage attacking. Oh, disadvantage. Eh, well, shit, let's try it anyway. I mean, I still got Hunter's Mark on the damn thing. I mean, I'll be zephyr but let's see what happens. All right. First roll, fuck. Second roll, fuck. Um, Yeah, I I popped the can open my arrow, and that's pretty much all I did. Okay. Are you sure? He's got a fairly low AC. Um, does a 10 hit? No. Yeah, no. Alright. <laughs> uh, anything else, Varys? I drink my beer. Okay. Renazmir. I love how that's his no. I drink my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking beer is a free drink action. My beer. Okay. I can get to him if I ride my floating disc into combat. <laughs> But I need to know how Rachel feels about the maneuverability of my disc. Talk to me about my know. disc, Rachel. <laughs> I don't know. How, 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 how well can I move my disc? Uh, I could not say. Well, Goku, how can you fly your Nimbus? <laughs> yeah, I want to know about my Nimbus movement. What do you think? I'm not seeing any specifics on... Uh, on on movement, I know it's like it can. What's the turning radius on it? Is it like a Toyota Tercel, or are we talking more like a like a uh, uh, an Impreza? I don't know. 
What is it? W R X S T I. Does it turn like a naval so battleship? <laughs> yeah. It, would I be able to use it as sort of a combat platform? Think of it like mm -hmm. American Gladiator sans the pole. That was the smartest sentence that ever contained the word American Gladiators in it. At least you said only, pole and not shaft. Well, that, that because was, only because American Gladiators was followed by the word sands. Yeah. <laughs> I could do it in Latin. A, I could do it in Latin if you. How does this not have a movement speed? Does this really not have a movement? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um. I want a silver surfer for this bitch. Well, you can't move higher than ten feet off the ground. Right, but I'm six feet tall, ten feet off the ground, and if I have a person standing there i could go on them as the new bottom surface right so i could like hover above them we could no. stack up no you can't do that how high up is he uh we'll say he's 10 feet up well then that's where i need to be right okay. would um, that work i i guess it because you have to be within 20 feet of it i'm losing audio here i don't know if it's me or you you have to be so you have to be within twenty feet of it. Um, so I guess it moves at your speed. Right. Okay. So it can move like I would move, right? Yes. Oh, sure. that is so good. And okay. by the way, thank you for setting precedent. <laughs> okay. I'm going to cast floating disc and mount my new mount. Okay. Uh, I I call it the Death Glider. Thank you for that, Stargate. That was a very cool name you created. It's not the Death Disc. Oh, that's good, too. Yeah. It's too late. You already etched in Death Glider. <laughs> I like Death Glider, too. I, the alliteration be damned. Death Glider sounds fucking horrifying, right? Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to lift into the air, and I'm going to be very dramatic about it. Uh <laughs> I would use my bonus action to give. So the uh, the hallway is only uh, ten feet tall. So you you well, could. I rise above the you, zombies, these the, lower level enemies. When I'm so in the once, room. but once you move into the actual cavern, the ceiling is twenty feet. Right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to stay on the ground and then lift up once I'm into that room. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give a bonus action by doing double finger guns at Dewok. <laughs> ah, thank you, bonus, Bubby. <laughs> uh because he's got a, a an arrow thing um and then for my turn i'm going to use uh told the dead on one of the zombies at the ground using my finger gun. didn't you use your action to cast oh your that's right flying disc? yeah i did okay well then i'm just gonna move to a part of the side of the room and i'm gonna look at uh the skull and be like you ain't the only one that can fly bitch <laughs> No, I'm going to say it like, hey, look at me. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot who I was. For I can fly too. <laughs> I can do it too. <laughs> All right. Uh, Virian. Uh, dun -dun -dun -dun. So he's a blurry, fuzzy skeleton right now, huh? Yeah, just a skull. Just a sc uh, skull. Uh, I'm going to, uh, let's see. Can I do that? Does it would, uh, would I be able to capture the zombies and the flaming skull within a 20-foot cube? Uh, no. You could get both the zombies, though. Or I could just get the flaming skull. Yes. Uh, I think I'm just going to do the flaming skull. I'm going to target uh, the flaming skull with fairy fire. It needs to make a D, uh, 12 DC dex save. Okay. Uh, he gets advantage on saving throws against spells and other magic effects. Fuck. All right, uh, Virian, you, you got a nat 20 on his save. Motherfucker, fuck him. <laughs> fuck him, fuck him, just fuck him. Does he um, take half damage? No. No, 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 no. If it fails a dexterity, no, no. The whole point was to try and negate the disadvantage against him by okay. lightening him up like a Christmas tree. Okay. I'm going to do the Aladdin on my turn. I'm going to reach my hand down to Virian and be like, do you trust me? <laughs> <laughs> all right it is the flame yeah, skulls old. turn uh he's gonna shoot a fire ray out of his eyes uh he's gonna aim it at renazmir this is a ranged bitch. spell attack he got a nat 20 i'm going wait what okay 
Uh, so, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> um. Oh, wait. Wait, what do you mean, oh, no? <laughs> yeah, exactly what she means. Oh, no. I can that's fly, that, too. Ah! <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that, that's that fake concern. It's like, oh, no, I'm going to so totally murder you. Oh, no. Oh, no. no uh, that's 24 <laughs> fire damage for Nazir. What? That's Are okay. Sure? Stop, drop, and roll. Is the fall damage better than the... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. D6 for fall damage. Oh, no. <laughs> so you're 10 feet up, right? So it's a D6 for fall damage. You want to roll that for me? Sure. I want this to all be on you. Four. So that's okay. a total of 28 damage. <laughs> I will be at negative 16 damage. <laughs> I have two points before I hit my my uh, constitution. Oh wait, no, no, I'm at sixteen. So what does that mean exactly? No, you're I'm... you're just you're just unconscious because that okay. the the fall damage was taken at a different. It wasn't taken like at the same time as the fire damage. That's so different. But you're just <laughs> you're just unconscious. So you're gonna make. Okay. What are you guys doing? I can raise myself. Okay. Uh, that was his turn. I guess that would make sense. I would, I would take a, a fa auto fail though on the, on the death save, right? Take one death save immediately for yep, falling. Yeah, that'd be a fail. Uh, teacher, teacher, damage, we need more homework. Take the damage in the air, right? Mm -hmm. Hit the after I'm dead in the air, <laughs> I fall to the ground. <laughs> Hit the ground. That's a the, fail on your yeah. death save. Okay, okay. um, zombie. Renazmir, you look pretty dead, so he's not gonna he's not gonna go after you. Uh Varys. Boy, way to take a cool moment and really just <laughs> pardon the plot, drive it into the ground. <laughs> uh Varys. You're feeling that you, dead horse. You, yeah, you, you fell for that one. Varys. I need to pass my death saves immediately or I'm gonna get a butt potion. That should be a motivator for everyone. Hey, to be perfectly fair, you're getting a butt potion anyway, buddy. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's how I drink everything, so it doesn't really matter. You should have seen me with this milkshake the other day. <laughs> it was weird. All right, Varys. So you saw you saw Renazmir, like hop on his his death glider and like it has <laughs> its name means a lot, right? Because <laughs> you glide to your death. Um, and then the <laughs> the flame skull shot fire out of its eyes and just like hit Renazmir. He just hit the ground. I'm so he's in the the cavern area. He's kind of near some of the zombies, not adjacent. I've never heard a better metaphor for my ex-girlfriend. I started to rise up, <laughs> and she shot death beams out of her eyes, and it killed me. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect metaphor. Oh, Completely I'm sorry. Went limp. I'm sorry. Were you jealous that I started to, to have some lift? <laughs> and you gave me a death stare, and now I'm on the ground dead. Oh, God. <laughs> Take so, that bitch. <laughs> anyway, Varys. I'm going to call you out on a D&D &D podcast in five oh. years. <laughs> Varys, uh, what would you like to do? Oh, shit. Um, I got the bardic inspiration. He, is he still blurring? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's still, he's still blurry. Alright. We'll have to take a shot then. You have a bonus. Damn. I do have your bardic bonus. Hey, that's a bardic <laughs> bonus. That's what all, all right. the girls at the concert say. Would you please bardically bonus? And I'm like, I will do that when I'm not dead. All right, we got or a. Or wait till rigor mortis sets in. Your call. We have sixteen. Uh, sixteen will hit. Oh, I don't have to use the bardic inspiration. All right, and then Not with the my hunter strike on that motherfucker, I can't use the board. No, no, because uh, make sure you differentiate yeah. what's the piercing damage. Okay, the piercing damage is the D8. The hunter's mark is the D6. Okay. Um, doesn't matter. They're both fours. So, um, I do four plus four, which is the arrow. So that's eight. Half is four, and then four from the hunter's mark. So total. No, of eight. no, it should be six, right? Because only half, one of those is halved. Yeah, the, the so piercing six. is halved. Well, I got four damage from my dexterity. 
Oh, right, right. So then okay. plus that, so it's ten, right? That, uh, well, he only had three hit points, so you kill him. Okay. So All right. Breaks into pieces and falls to the ground. The flaming sphere dies out. Well, it was already dead. And Renazmir magically die. comes to his feet because nope. the death bitch is dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, zombie. Uh, Renazmir looks pretty dead, so he's not going to do anything. Uh, Renazmir, really... give me a death save. Uh, Sixteen. That is a pass. Need two more of those. Um, Virian. There are All right. Two... So I do two more real quick, just so I don't have to get a, a potion on my butt. <laughs> there, are two, there are two zombies, Marion. There's two zombies, and then... <sighs> I'm looking all right. Has... I'm looking fine. You <laughs> I guys don't know. handle the zombies. The way it looks to me is you oh, face I'm planted... I'm the potion in the funnel. You face planted, your flat face on the ground with your right. ass sticking up in the air. This is a nice little mini game we've developed here. And, and, and if you're dead for dis- too long, your friends will put things in your butt. <laughs> it's a weird. It's you a guys weird established mini-game. this with Mel. <laughs> you guys created this. And he hasn't been back in a while. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you guys did uh, this to Mel like twice, I think. Uh, the, the- <laughs> it's not because we shoved the potion. Is <laughs> No, it's not because we should. It's a, it's a, it's a unhealthy, it's a healthy coincidence. Unhealthy right. coincidence. I don't know. Take it how you want it. Okay. Uh, magic missile as a second level spell. Fuck it. Uh, I'm gonna send two at one zombie and two at the other. Okay. Zombie the first gets four, five, and oh wow, God. two fours. So that's ten points of damage to zombie number one. Shit. Okay. I need him to live. <laughs> he. Are you, was that for the one that was injured or the one that hasn't been hit yet? Uh, you know what? I didn't specify, so even it's hit, odd it's not. Uh, even, it's the one that was damaged. Okay, so that kills him. Okay. And then uh, to the other one, because it's a second level spell, I get to cast a total of four. So the other two, that's a four. And... A one. So four, five, six, seven. Seven points of damage to the remaining zombie. Okay. That's the first time that one's taken damage. So he's still still kicking. And then I guess I will move over to Renazmir. Okay. No! Get the big funnel. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, wait. Did my disc fall on top of me? (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I would think his his disc disappear. I would would assume No, no. It casts for a duration. Oh, it's not oh. a concentration? Oh. I hope not. <laughs> hey, we bought one of those nice black potions from some armored dude in Waterdeep. We're going to shove because, it straight. <laughs> because if it landed on top of me, he wouldn't be able to move it. It would require... It would duration require... Duration one hour. So... Let's roll I a guess, dice to see where it landed. technically, like, you would just... You would just be floating ten feet in the air on top of it. If you're standing, well, oh, yeah, fell let's off, do though. that. But he fell like off. No, 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 no. No, you would you... fall off. It's very, it's 10 it's feet. A... Yeah. 10 feet's a lot. That's five feet on either side it's of where I would be It's three feet in diameter. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that's enough to cover my butthole, my porthole, my, port, my rear exhaust. <laughs> no, it's still floating 10 feet in the air. You fell off of it and then it stopped moving. What, the disc or his butthole? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to imagine that I would have hovered <laughs> off the edge of it. Uh-huh. Okay, shit. <laughs> what if I had a dream about moving it over my butt? Uh, Magic um, can't tell the difference between right, genuine so Varian, thought and sleep thought. You moved uh, over to Renazmir. Yeah, and then I and then Do it. Just do it. That's as, part of the game. As <laughs> as a bonus action. Yeah, you have to put a ring of salt on the edge though. Before you do it. I do mine like margaritas. Thank you. <laughs> look, I am not going to lick the salt off of that, okay? <laughs> Put a lime wedge on the I don't care how treat much me lime. Like a, t- treat me like a gentleman, you dick. <laughs> uh, I will administer... I will admit... It, and I love the way that this is... Drinking or administering a potion takes an action. Ass minister. Yes, you are the it, ass minister. It, yes. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they specifically the, wrote the word administer, okay? You're the, you're the chaplain drink, of assless chaps. We get it. Let's drink, do it. 
<laughs> drinking is not the only way to, <laughs> to do this. So, yeah. So I'll use my one remaining healing potion, 2d4 plus 2. Uh, da, 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 da. All good. Hey, I rolled double fours again. So 10 hey. points, max damage. There you go. Full potency. Max damage? <laughs> or ma <laughs> yes, max damage. Max Swank. healing, max I'm healing to Renazmir. I'm still unconscious. Oh, you no, you're not. You go to you go to zero, and you go to so zero. so you you gain ten hit points. So you're awake now. You're awake. You're awake and surprisingly aroused. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the bottle's still in there. Holy shit. Um, this I I'm going to I'm going to tell you. This is surprising. I did not <laughs> And it's it's one of those fancy like pink crystal bottles too. So <laughs> I'm like I only use premium on leaded. So I hope I hope you didn't skip out. <laughs> no, Eddie... you, you got the octane booster. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it out. Here? Make a noise. <laughs> Anything else, Virion? Uh, no, no, no. I think I've done quite enough. Thank okay. you very much. All right, Varys. Uh, there's one zombie, and then. Um what you have witnessed between your your bandmates <laughs> this isn't new this is this is how we work this, this, is, this a, is a lich gate normal it's a bonding moment between manager and bandmate okay that's Holy what it shit, is never say that again <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say bondage moment i said bonding moment there's a difference <sighs> oh man wow i like to okay just before we before we go any further there is an implied consent amongst our band. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've yes. done worse things for yes. sure. We a do this for recreational. Like, I mean, yeah, use. rectilationally. I mean, rectilationally, <laughs> yes. <laughs> rectilational use. And yeah. don't we, worry, Marion did buy him dinner first. <clears throat> when, when but I still need... haven't seen my shoes <laughs> <laughs> from All right. 14 games ago. All right, Daddy will get baby a pair of shoes. Are you happy? Oh, <laughs> God. Okay. Don't say it like that. <laughs> That, that wasn't part of our agreement. Well, that's in your contract to deal with it. <sighs> it's very important At least that we don't waste any potion. Corner. So that's no. sort of the thing. No. I get it, that part. Yes. We're frugal. Varys, yeah. what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking my lucky stars. I wasn't the one that went down first. <laughs> I might, I might hit him with a spell just so we can all be on board. <laughs> you said there's one zombie left. There's one zombie left. I'm gonna move my hunter's mark over here. Okay. As a bonus action. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab that mace and can I close the distance between me and him? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna swing the mace at him. Okay. It's still glowing. Alright. And that is a seven. I'm gonna roll my Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> That's a good idea. That is five and seven is twelve. That will hit. Oh thank God. Alright, so Mace is D six, the radiance is D eight, and the hunter's mark is another D six. The radiant is D six. The mace oh, the is D eight. Okay. Ooh. Good to know. And then the hunter's mark is another D6. And that is 15 plus two strength. 17. You kill him. Woo! Um, so, Virian, you do know that uh, the flame skull uh, will regain all of his hit points in an hour unless holy water is sprinkled on his remains or a dispel magic or remove curse is cast on it. Give me your beer. Got it. Here's my holiest beer. <laughs> Speaking of uh, holiest beer, let me have one of those. <laughs> yeah, here you go, sir. Uh, this is my bung holiest beer. Yeah. I I I I'd like to use my arcana in some way to imbue the holy spirit into this beer that would be a religion not an arcana uh well i got a little bit of religion i can do it okay here and and really Mary... wouldn't it be varus since it, you, you asked varus to sort of bless this beer uh okay well yeah bless your beer 
<laughs> By the gods, Jack and Jose, I swear upon this beer. <laughs> <laughs> What's your what's your religion, Varys? Paps. <laughs> roll, roll your religion. All right. It's Papst over. <laughs> oh shit. Sixteen. Okay. So. Um, Paps, cores, and bud. So I swear. You pour you pour one out on this uh on this skull, um. You don't, you don't think that this will, this will stick, uh, but it's probably you've bought a, a couple more hours than you normally would otherwise. What do you mean? You don't think this will stick? Like it's not normally it's like real? to create holy water. It's like an hour long uh, spell or yeah. like an hour long ritual or something like that. So I'm not, I'm not giving is that he, to you. Is he dust or is he just a skull? Uh, so he's just a skull, sort of like broken up into pieces. Can I, can I dig a hole and bury it in the hole? <laughs> uh, well, this is all sort of rock. You're in you're in a mine. Yeah. We should just take a little bit of the skull and put it in separate bags and then throw it in different yeah. corners. Yeah. Can, can we like smash the skull and like scatter the pieces? Sure. I take the mace and start banging the shit out of the skull. <laughs> okay. So you can break it up in in a number of pieces. Can can we pulverize it into dust? Can I just roll an Arcana check or a knowledge about magic? Can Varian do the line of it? Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I'll do an Arcana check. Okay. Word to God, Nat twenty. <laughs> oh, God. Are you just wanting to learn about what these How are? It reforms. Yeah, I want. Well, I want to know as much as I can about it, but I want to start with the, in particular, the knowledge of how it would reform after we left it for a while. God. I want to make um, a cod piece out of it. <laughs> it would it would still reform. You probably would not like the no, results no, of that. No. Um, oh man! It'd be also so a flaming it cod regains... piece. Laser eyes at your dick. That's the <laughs> second metaphor. Um, it, so it regains all its hit points in an hour, <clears throat> typically. Um, if you were to like break it up into pieces, it, it would probably take longer for it to reform. But essentially, like it would, like the if the pieces were sort of scattered around, um, then like the biggest piece would sort of regrow and reform itself into a skull. See, it's a little known fact that Varian has gotten as powerful as he has in the business because he basically destroys and snorts a line of his enemies. (laughs) (laughs) I will smash this into whatever fine powder I'll do the roll if he will snort it. (laughs) Oh, man. Can you imagine him growing a second head out of the side of his shoulder? (laughs) Be totally metal. Be metal. (laughs) He told me that when Lichgate goes to hell. He's like, I've already trapped one skull in here. Ain't nothing to do a second. Well, how do I, how do I stop it again from uh, reforming? Do I know um, that? So that 20? either either holy water on it, or you have to cast a dispel magic or remove curse. Hmm. As we continue to pour beer all over. Wait, it. is it bound to this location? They didn't leave the room, so can the, I infer anything from that? Um, give me an intelligence check. No modifier? Just your intelligence modifier. 16. So you noticed that the zombies didn't follow you guys out and didn't... um, Like, once you guys sort of went off into the hallway, they seemed to lose interest in you. Um, But the flame skull was still sort of attacking you guys and trying to maneuver Mm. you around with the flaming sphere. So... Uh, you can infer that the the zombies are sort of bound to this area, but the flame skull, uh, while it seems to kind of hang out in this area, it's not it's not okay. bound to the location. Can we okay. put the skull inside the uh, ghost dude's trunk with his other shit and lock it and run? <laughs> well, you'd have to go in there, and he might want to know what you're what you're doing we're just giving him a nice fancy skull if we broke it into dust we could walk in there and sprinkle it in his room without him knowing and then they could handle each other they could fight each other (laughs) be fucking hilarious and then we'll walk in finish off whoever's left and take the pipe (laughs) that ladies and gentlemen is what's known as a dick move (laughs) (laughs) completely up for this move (laughs) 
Uh, I mean, that's up, that's up to you guys what you want to do. Well, um, let's turn it into dust, and when we start to notice it reform, we can hit it with a hammer and deactivate it again. <laughs> Someone's just always on. Oh, we're gonna have a pet flamey's call. Then we're gonna I mean, shit up. Right, right now it's right now it's dead, so it's not really aware of what you guys are doing. So if you left it here. And then whenever it reformed, it wouldn't know like which way you guys went or anything. Yeah, like but that. we'd have to come back. Well, we, we assume back. that there's no secondary pathway back. We're there that definitely is an could be. I mean, you yeah. guys like when you guys first entered um, this area, like the initial entrance into this cave system, there were two entrances you guys could take, and you took the eastern one. But I, I mean, still, I still want to take it with us. Okay. Well, we're petty motherfuckers. We're taking it. Yeah, I, I'll have a little pouch. We can put all the bone dust inside there. Okay. And then whenever it starts to reform and the bag gets full, we just hit the side of the bag with a hammer and smash <laughs> it back down. That's what the glowing mace is for. Okay. <laughs> Blur in there, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bone dust is the street name for Viagra. <laughs> actually, that's actually a name. Oh, it's gold dust. Never mind. <laughs> There's a wrestler named Gold Dust. Oh, God. And it's the lamest shit I've ever seen. Once again, we want to thank you guys for listening to Freelance Heroism. We hope you're having just as much fun listening as we are playing. Visit us at facebook.com slash freelance heroism and leave us a like. If you'd like to see our adventures in comic form, the professional illustrates our misadventures and more at 1d4rounds.com. If you're interested in supporting us, consider donating. We're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism. Keep an eye out for rewards as we add them. Our cast includes me, Dees Cassius, as Renazmir on lead guitar, David Walker as Varys on drums, and Nathan Lett as Virian Herpator, Lich Gate's executive talent agent. And let's not forget, last but not least, our suffering DM, Rachel Moore. Questions or comments? Send an email to freelanceheroismpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week. Until then, the invoice is in the mail. Let me drink real quick. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to drink soda to wet my whistle. <laughs> and by whistle, I mean penis. <laughs> How are you doing that by drinking? I got wide mouth bottles. <laughs>